When anyone comes to visit our small corner of an even smaller island, a must-see is a grand spectacle of ancient rocks created by the very giants that gave our heritage the incredible scale and wonder. The Giant's Causeway is one of the most iconic landmarks in the world. It's not just for its jaw-dropping beauty. This natural wonder has been the centre of myths, legends and even scientific curiosity for centuries. But what if I told you that beneath the stunning basalt columns lies a story of fire, mystery and forces that shaped the very land itself. Long before it became a UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Giant's Causeway was a symbol of ancient folklore. But what's the real truth behind this fascinating place? Stick around to find out. I'm Justin Laurie from On The Square Emporium and today we're uncovering the secrets of the Giant's Causeway. Love history, myths and nature's wonders. Subscribe and hit that bell icon. Long ago, before time was measured by clocks and calendars, there lived a great Irish giant called Finn McCool. He was strong, clever and known across the land for his heroic deeds. But across the sea in Scotland, there lived another giant called Ben O'Donner, who claimed that he was the greatest giant of all. And Finn was not one to let such challenges go unanswered. Finn decided he would confront Ben O'Donner face to face. But the sea stood between them. Finn, neither one to back down, began to hurl massive chunks of rocks across the ocean. Each stone he threw landed with a thunderous splash, forming a path from the shores of Ireland to the coast of Scotland. This mighty walkway became known as the Giant's Causeway. With the path complete, Finn set out to meet his rival. However, as he approached the Scottish coast and saw Ben O'Donner in the distance, he realised he made a terrible mistake. Ben O'Donner was far bigger than Finn McCool had imagined. Fearing for his life, Finn turned and fled back to Ireland. When he arrived back home, he told his wife Una of the enormous threat that was coming. Una, known for her quick wit, came up with a brilliant plan. She dressed Finn in a giant baby's outfit and laid him in a massive cradle. Then she scattered toys around the room and prepared some food fit for a hungry toddler. Not long after, Ben O'Donner arrived, furious and ready to fight. Una greeted him politely and told him that Finn was out, but that he was welcome to come in and wait. Curious, Ben O'Donner stepped inside and spotted the huge baby sleeping in the cradle. His eyes widened. If that was Finn's child, how massive must Finn himself be? Terrified, Ben O'Donner made his excuses and hurried towards Scotland. His footsteps shaking the earth as he ran, he tore up the stones behind him so the Finn couldn't follow him. What remained of the causeway eventually sank into the sea, leaving behind only strange, beautiful columns that rise from the water today. So to this day, these rocks stand on the coast of County Antrim and people still tell the tale of Finn McCool and his clever wife. The same hexagonal stones can be found on the Isle of Staffa in Scotland, adding to the belief that the path once stretched between the two lands. Now we know the legend surrounding the seemingly ordinary piece of rock. The actual science is probably even more interesting and to do that we need to look back millions of years. But we'll dig into that right after this message. Do you like stones? How about a stone frog? How about a tree bench? Vintage gardening signs? And tools. For all of this and more visit onthesquareemporium.com or visit the link. The Giant's Causeway consists of approximately 40,000 interlocking basalt columns, most of which are hexagonal in shape. These striking stone structures were not carved by giants, but by volcanic forces that date back roughly 50 to 60 million years during the Paleocene Epoch. At the time, the region that is now Northern Ireland was geologically active. The Earth's crust was stretching and thinning, which allowed for magna deep within the mantle to rise towards the surface. As this magna erupted, it formed extensive lava plateaus. One of these lava flows, composed mainly of basalt, spread across the ancient landscape. When the lava reached the surface and began to cool, it did not do so evenly. So the cooling process caused the basalt to contract, much like how mud cracks when it dries. The basalt began to fracture. These fractures spread downwards as the lava cooled from the top, resulting in the formation of long vertical columns. The most common shape produced was hexagonal, as this was the most efficient shape for the contraction to occur evenly. Some columns, however, have four, five, seven, or even eight sides. These shapes were influenced by the local differences in temperature, cooling rate, and the composition of the lava. So as the lava cooled, the actual rocks itself, as you can see here, they were turned into a convex, so you can tell if it's a real piece from the Giant's Causeway because it won't be flat along the top, it'll be concave like this or convex if it's upside down. So whenever it cooled, it cooled around the center. So the edges cooled first and hardened and then it came down. But whenever you look at them, they naturally fractured as well. So if you look at the huge columns, you can see the fracture points all the way down. You also can see, if you look at it, 
that there is sort of a pattern moving out. You can see it more on this one here, uh, which is upside down. You can see almost a center point and veins running to the outside. Again, how you can tell if it is a real Giant's Causeway basalt column stone. The height of the columns varies, with some reaching up to 12 meters. The tops of the columns create a natural stepping stone effect that leads from the foot of the cliff and disappears into the sea. Over millions of years, wind, rain and waves have continued to shape the formation, exposing more of the columns and sculpting the surrounding cliffs. The Giant's Causeway is part of a much larger volcanic region known as the Thulin Plateau, which once stretched from present-day Greenland through parts of Europe. The same geological process that formed the causeway also created similar structures in other parts of the world, including Fingal's Cave in the Scottish Isle of Staffa. This shared the geological heritage and supports the scientific explanation that both sites were formed by the same ancient volcanic system. But with the causeway being a protective site booming with tourism, how is it that I'm standing here with an actual causeway stone? To understand how this is possible, we need to learn about an unknown period of the location's history. The Giant's Causeway, now a celebrated natural wonder, was once the site of a lesser known chapter. It was used as a stone quarry long before it became a protected landscape. The unique basalt columns were seen not only as a geological curiosity, but also as a potential source of valuable building material. In the 18th and 19th century, as interest in the site grew, so did the idea that stones might be put to practical use. The basalt was extremely hard and durable, making it attractive for use in roads, buildings and sea defences. Local landowners and businessmen viewed the area as an opportunity to profit, especially as the Industrial Revolution increased demand for strong construction materials. By the early 1800s, small-scale quarrying had begun, Workers broke off the columns using hammers and wedges and sometimes even gunpowder. The extracted stones were then shipped out for use in various construction projects. Though the amount of the stone removed was modest compared to the large commercial quarries, the work still caused noticeable damage to the site's natural appearance. Tourists were already beginning to visit the causeway during this period. Inspired by drawings, paintings and early guidebooks, many were appalled by the sight of the broken columns and scattered debris. As tourism increased, so did public concern. People feared that if the quarrying continued unchecked, one of Ireland's most distinct landscapes might be lost forever. By the mid 19th century, local voices, naturalists, and members of the scientific community began calling for better protection. Efforts to limit the quarrying were supported by the growing interest in geology as a science, which led to deeper appreciation of the formation and structures of the causeway. Writers and artists also played a role, capturing the unique features of the site, raising awareness of the need for preservation. Quarrying gradually declined as the public pressure mounted and the idea of conservation gained ground. Eventually, the practice halted altogether. The causeway's value as a natural and cultural treasure had overtaken its appeal as a source of raw material. In the 20th century, the area gained legal protection, first through local efforts and later through national and international recognition. Today, traces of the past quarry can still be seen. Some damaged columns remain and certain areas show signs of human interference. These marks serve as a reminder of the tensions that once existed between industrial use and natural preservation. By 1986, the Giant's Causeway was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site, recognizing its global importance as a natural wonder. It is also a national natural reserve, managed to help protect its delicate ecosystem and geological features. Today, the Giant's Causeway attracts visitors from all over the world who come to marvel at its beauty and to learn about the powerful natural forces that shaped it. Though the legend of Finn McCool adds charm and mystery, the story lies in the intense heat, pressure and ancient fire beneath the Earth's surface. The columns stand as a lasting reminder of the planet's dynamic and ever-changing nature. So there we have it. What do you think about the legend of the Giant's Causeway? Let us know in the comments section below. If you would like to own unique pieces of history like a Giant's Causeway stone, make sure to check out onthesquareemporium.com. And if you enjoy these videos, make sure to come back when we upload our next deep dive into the intriguing history of the weird and wonderful.